You have clicked or tapped onto the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. It's the Monday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. I'm still working at getting access to my Facebook page. It's been a little over two weeks now, and at some point this week, we're going to just give up and start new. I might suggest uh, to everyone that you follow a new uh, Facebook page for me, but we're going to give it a couple more days to try to get access to my old page, which has over 27 or 28,000 followers at this point. I've spent nine years building that thing up, so I don't want to give up on it, but uh, we may have to do that this week. In the meantime, thanks for following me on all the social media outlets, including if you're on Instagram or Twitter, I'm Eric WFMJ. And of course, a lot of you are watching this video on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribing to my videos there. All right, enough self-promotion. Let's talk about weather. And uh, as we head towards midweek, things are going to be a lot better than today, which was kind of a clammy, chilly, uh, dank, Monday across the area. Not as interesting, though, as 35 years ago today. One of the most anomalous springtime weather events in uh, recorded history for our area occurred on this date back in 1987 when we had 11.8 inches of snow. Now, this is the fourth snowiest calendar day on record for our area, and it occurred in early April in 1987. Actually, we had two of these in 1987. We had another big time snow event at the end of March, just a handful of days before this one. We, some places had double digit snow amounts at the end of March. So we got a double whammy in late March and early April, 35 years ago. Uh, interesting that, you know, two of our snowiest calendar days on record are not in the heart of winter at all. One was the big snowstorm in 1950, which was in November. And then this one, uh, number four on the list occurred in April of 1987. Now, snow of that magnitude is pretty unusual in April, of course, but snow in April period uh, is not that unusual. In fact, we see about 4% of our annual snowfall in the month of April uh, when we look at historical averages. Didn't have any snow out there today, but it was chilly. It was damp. Only 0.03, uh, the official uh, rain gauge value at the Youngstown Warren Airport today. It wasn't much rain, but it was damp and chilly. 43 today, a full 12 degrees. Cooler than the average for today's date. Time lapse from Niles today shows the kind of overcast conditions for a lot of the day. Now, the sky did brighten some towards the end of the afternoon as the rain pushed away, and just after the start of this recording, uh, sunset should be a pretty decent one as the clouds continue to thin in parts of the area, starting to see some breaks in the overcast in eastern Ohio and out into central parts of Ohio as well. The severe weather threat tonight is focused in the southern U.S. Severe thunderstorm watch in yellow out here across uh, parts of northern Texas, extreme southern parts of Oklahoma as well. Now the severe weather risk will shift east tomorrow. It could be a pretty active day tomorrow in parts of the uh, southeastern U.S. from southern Mississippi through Alabama through Georgia. Of course this week is the uh, the uh, Masters Tournament in Augusta, Georgia, which is kind of right on the Georgia-South Carolina border. Official play begins on Thursday, but practice rounds will continue on Tuesday and some thunderstorms will have to be dodged it looks like. And uh, that threat for severe weather in the south will actually continue into the day on Wednesday with the highest risk closer to Atlanta and Birmingham. But uh, across the rest of the southeast, uh, severe thunderstorms will be a possibility. Outside chance of a rumble of thunder way up here on Wednesday, but uh, don't expect any severe weather in eastern Ohio and western PA. We are expecting a better day on Tuesday. Morning sunshine mixed with clouds. Clouds will thicken from south to north. As we get into the afternoon, I think we are going to get grazed by a little bit of light rain towards sunset Tuesday evening into the overnight. This isn't going to be much, but a little bit of rain for a handful of hours. We should be dry at the start of the day Wednesday. Some sun Wednesday will help I'll help our uh, temperatures get well up into the 60s, but then clouds will thicken again in the afternoon, and then this technically kind of an uh, occluded front, or you could draw it as a cold front like I did on the weather map here. This will head our way Wednesday evening, another round of wet weather. Uh, it's timing similar to tomorrow. This will be pretty late in the day, towards very late afternoon and more so into the evening hours from around sunset onwards. And then on Thursday, the, the front's gone. The true cold air is not here j just yet. Pardon me. That cold air is lurking out here. That's what's going to pivot in for Friday and the start of the weekend. But we'll be kind of in between those systems on Thursday. So we'll start the day with some sun. Then clouds will bubble. And as this cold pocket of air aloft moves in, maybe a couple of showers will break out Thursday afternoon. But I think by Friday and Saturday, we'll be underneath that kind of trough of low pressure in just a couple of clammy 
chilly, damp days coming up, and I think we will probably see a couple of snow flurries mixed with those rain showers late Friday night into Saturday night as well. And Saturday's temperatures will be similar to today, no better than the lower 40s. Good news in the longer range, though. About eight or nine days from now, I think we've got some 70s in our future for at least two days, maybe three. Um, so all the cold will be bottled up in the western U.S. for a few days. Now, it'd be nice if this pattern were going to lock in, right? Doesn't appear to be the case. Uh, this is going to be a nice pattern for a few days. Uh, but then the uh, pattern kind of reverts beyond this. Here's our uh, warm-up next week. But then beyond this, that trough lifts out of the southern U.S. and kind of recenters itself out here. This is tonight's run of the European weeklies, uh, the twice-a-week set of modeling, Mondays and Thursdays, that uh, goes out 46 days. Uh, this is not really useful for day-to-day -day forecasting, but we can start to pick out trends in the longer range. And I don't love the trends here as we go into the second half of April after that mild stretch during the middle of next week. Here's a look at the, uh, the trends as we head towards the 17th, 18th, 19th, uh, you know, Ridge popping up out west, trough digging into the east, and so we're going to go back below average, it looks like, for another weekend, probably. So this coming weekend will be chilly, warm, middle of next week, but then the following weekend, probably starting to turn rather chilly once again. And then the pattern sort of becomes nondescript as we get farther out and into time, and that happens a lot with these long-range modeling, uh, sets of modeling, I should say. Uh, you start seeing everything kind of becoming kind of flat in its presentation in the longer range, because... Of course, in these ensemble models, you get a whole bunch of solutions all over the place, and then they kind of average together to become just kind of a blah-looking map. And so it's, especially once you get outside of winter, as we get into spring and into summer and fall, these maps become a little less useful in the longer range because they just sort of wash everything out. Um, but pretty high confidence in the details over the next couple of weeks. Chilly today, warmer for the next few days, colder by the weekend, and then quite a bit warmer for a few days next week, followed by chill for at least a handful of days heading towards that following weekend. So it's going to turn cool again by the 16th, 17th, 18th, and that trend may continue into the last 10 days of April. Confidence starts to decrease pretty rapidly once we get past, say, the 20th and 21st. That'll do it for me tonight on Weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks, as always, for watching, and I will see you right back here on Tuesday.